Hello, everyone. Welcome to Unfinished Business. Today's topic of discussion is, has COVID helped or hindered the sustainability vision? Sustainability, once a word synonymous with creating a profitable business that thrives, it is now about ensuring that the whole planet continues to thrive. The COVID-19 pandemic has a huge impact on the environment and sustainability effort, both in a positive and negative manner. A highly contagious virus has meant greater use of single-use, non-biodegradable products like masks and other PPE. Recent studies estimate that we use an astounding 129 billion face masks globally every month. That is 3 million a minute, just on face masks alone. And with 40% of today's global plastic waste ending up in the environment, that is not a good news for our environment or our wildlife. On the other side, there has been huge changes for the planet. Less cars on the road as people work from home, shoppers moving towards local produce and companies that have greater values are seeing an increase of revenue, even if that comes to a slightly higher cost. YouGov has found that because of the coronavirus, 64% of people want to support local businesses and buy local products with 39% of shoppers saying that they now have a more environmentally friendly mindset when it comes to shopping. On a global scale, countries coming together to unroll a vaccination effort in such a short space of time has shown that the world can pull together for the greater good, the kind of collaboration needed to save our planet. The jury is out on green credentials of the pandemic that has shaken the business world to the core. Has COVID helped or hindered the sustainability vision? The panel debates, I'll let them introduce themselves. I'll start with Dr. Carmen. Yeah, um, I'm Dr. Carmen Stoyan. I'm a senior lecturer in international business at Kent Business School. Um, I'm passionate about sustainability and I'm interested in how sustainability varies between countries and contexts. I'll go on to Mercy. Hi, um, my name is Mercy. Um, I'm just going into my third year at University of Kent. I do economics, um, but I just recently won the business startup journey for my uh, new business, Vgate, which is a vegan online delivery service. So um, yeah, so I'm interested in how veganism affects the environment, environment positively and how it's become more, more um, known. Yeah. Lovely. Now, Celia? Um, I am Celia, um, the founder of Intentional Beauty and a KBS alum. Um, my business is about um, finding a sustainable way to consume um, beauty um, because like, uh, it is known that um, the beauty world is like in a bloom and this has um, encouraged, a lot of, um, encouraged a lot of consumption, which is detrimental to our planet. So um, having this business would be a way to like support and respond to climate change. Lovely. And Catherine? Hi, um, my name is Catherine Morris. I've worked at the University of Kent for about 10 years in my role as environmental advisor, and I head up the sustainability team. And my role mainly involves embedding the 17 sustainable development goals across the organization, from our teaching and our research to our operations and engagement. So basically across everything we do. That's lovely. Thank you so much, panel. Let's start off. So the first question that I wanted to ask everyone is, what does sustainability mean to you and how has it been affected by the pandemic? Dr. Carmen, would you like to go first? Yes, thank you. So sustainability means lots of things to lots of people, depending on the point of view as well. So one of my favorite, of course, um, definitions and uh, is uh, um, about development that uh, um, allows the present needs to be met without compromising the future needs um, to be met of the future generations. However, I think you cannot have a, a, a good impact on the planet and the people and a profit if you don't have a business in the first place. So perhaps in today's uh, world of the pandemic, um, you know, survival is um, also part of the sustainability agenda. You need a, a business that to survive in order to be sustainable. And this is why lots of uh, um, firms have had to change their business models to work more, you know, to encourage home working and other changes in the supply chain, shorter than supply chain to bring back um, uh, sustainability in a way. Um, the other question was how sustainability has been affected by uh, the pandemic? Um, we see that um, although um, um, 
in a, in, in a study by Deloitte uh, with um, 750 uh, executives, a uh, study conducted at the beginning of this year, we see that uh, although executives, 80% of executives still think climate change is uh, very important, uh, more than half have said that, uh, unfortunately, lots of the initiatives have stalled uh, in terms of uh, climate change because um, they are very expensive. Um, it takes a lot of time and money to uh, reconfigure your supply chain in a greener manner. And um, CEOs are busy, busy with uh, tackling the pandemic, trying to keep their workforce safe. Um, so in a way, the, the, the focus has changed and uh, more on people. First, for the moment, uh, people are um, the key. They have to be healthy. They have to be safe. Mental health has become very important as well. But interestingly enough, a quarter of those surveys said that they will um, invest in uh, sustainability um, initiatives, which are still important. And consumers, we see that are more environmentally friendly. They are across the various countries. So an IBM study um, shows that uh, consumers around the world are ready to pay for more uh, sustainable products. They're ready to uh, work for sustainable companies, even if they are paid less, and they're ready to invest in sustainable investments. So it's a, a, mixed, um, a mixed impact and only future will tell if some of those changes would stay as well. Definitely. Thank you so much. Mercy, same question to you. Um, I think sustainability for me, I think it's quite personal to every person. But for me, I think it's kind of like just being a steward for future generations and like appreciating what we have right now and trying to keep it going. Yeah, that's amazing. And how has it been affected by the pandemic? Well, I, I think it's quite interesting, actually, because um, I think for me, like, even for me, it, it, my views were affected uh, from the pandemic. But um, I think like from like outside resources, we've kind of been pushed, like been told like how we can help um, with sustainability and things with like very small things that like, we've all been turning our taps off and we've been brushing our teeth. But I don't think we've really seen much of a change. So I think it's been nice over the pandemic where social media was such a big thing. We've seen like TikTok and things like really push like, things like a vegan diet which I know can really positively impact the environment and I think um like just this year in Veganuary half a million people signed up um and in 2020 22 percent of the UK were vegan which is a 40 percent increase mm -hmm. in just 12 months so I think it does have like of power I think people are able to like take control and change the narrative and feed people the information that is probably not pushed enough so yeah definitely thank you so much and Suliat same question to you um to me I would say just like um Mercy said and um Dr Carmen it's about um conserving the available physical and the natural and social resources we have um, around us to maintain the balance that we need to try like continuously, right? So, um, but the effects is not, um, it's not like one way, it's, it's not one dimensional, just like many things in life. It's, um, it's one, in, in a way it has created more awareness and then encourage us to be more pro, um, proactive and innovative with our response to climate change. It has given us more time to think about sustainability due to like slowing down during lockdown and then focusing on our health, um, we become more engaged in sustainability. Like um, people now are thinking of ways to reduce pollution, recycling, reusing, and etc. On the other hand, um, it has caused um, unprecedented disruption um, for many people, including corporates and startups. Um, it has uh, contributed to an unimaginable level of waste, which is detrimental to our planet. Uh, lockdown was a cultural um, shock for many and their coping mechanism was retail therapy. Um, mm. Retail therapy has influenced an unhealthy culture of consumerism, increasing the carbon footprint of food consumption and household energy. So you see like um, in a way it's a blessing in regards to sustainability and then in a way it's like the devil so is is nuanced like the effect is nuanced i would say definitely thank you so much for that 
And Catherine, same question to you. Yeah, so um, I'll echo what um, some of my previous panelists have said, especially what uh, Celia was saying about balance. I think sustainability is very much about um, balance. A healthy, um, sustainable economy only can only exist within a healthy uh, society and population, which itself can only exist within a healthy environment and planet. Um, so it's about finding the right balance of all those interconnectivities uh, to meet all of those needs, both now and in the future, to achieve true sustainability. Um, and like everyone else has said, the pandemic has affected almost all areas of sustainability, both positively and negatively. I think the true effects have yet to be determined. Um, we hear a lot about building back better and a green recovery from COVID. And that's absolutely right. This is a pivotal moment for us um, locally, nationally and globally. And we need to collectively now make that choice um, to take the lessons that we've learned from the pandemic, keep some of those positive changes, traveling less, flying less, um, and find a recovery from some of those negative impacts, such as the increase in single use plastics and things. Um, so now is really the time to apply all of those lessons we've learned to all of the global challenges, not just the sort of environmental in terms of emissions, but also addressing ecological breakdown and some of the, the societal injustices that we see. Um, I think as we continue to emerge from the pandemic, we'll start to see a clearer picture of just to what extent that is being achieved. Lovely. Thank you so much, panelists. Really appreciate it. Now, I want to direct a question to Mercy, firstly. How has people's awareness of sustainability and the environment developed since the start of the pandemic? And is it enough to make a difference moving forward? Um, I think it's enough to make a difference. I mean, I think like before, like not just with like eating habits, but even people's general habits, like my friends would laugh at me for going to the charity shop and now they're asking me can they come with me next time and I think like even in terms of food like with the veganism I was saying I think you know people always think that like oh what what do you even eat and why do you even do it and I think apps like TikTok and social media apps they're like really giving people like allowing people to like see like yes you can live a normal diet you can help like and it can actually make a a difference um so yeah so I think it's I think it's great I think I think they forecasted there to be seven million vegans in the UK by the end of the year so I think you can see that it is making a change and people are getting the information so definitely uh, I know myself I tried veganuary as well so it's been a massive shift so I completely agree with you in that sense yeah. um the next question that I have is for Celia so is it enough for companies to buy into the marketing buzz of sustainability without committing to the cause? And has this been heightened by the effects of the pandemic? Um, it's not enough for um, companies to just um, um, profit off of the um, awareness the pandemic has brought, um, brought to sustainability. But at the same time, um, I appreciate the effort that has been used to like spread awareness. So I believe that with the current level of awareness um, within um, the beauty industry, for example, which is where I'm very versed in. So um, within that um, industry, people are more aware and this awareness can like be used um, even after COVID. So, I feel like um, to make like a sustainable impact, companies need to do more than use it as a marketing, um, as a marketing boss, but more like a sustainable, um, a sustainable concept for the business. It should be embedded in the company to make sure that um, the impact is real. So, and then they can encourage people, including their customers, and then make partnership with other brands to do more for the planet. And there are many ways um, that carbon footprints can be reduced. And then they are not as um, simple, but if done like if done like well or correctly, it can um, it can go on and even outside COVID. So they can encourage like remote working or like hybrid working. People don't need to come to work every time if there's no need for it. And then 
the use of transport should be reduced to. So using sustainable transport where necessary, and then you drive more efficiently if there's a need by not speeding or accelerating unnecessarily. People mm -hmm. can even improve their energy efficiency by insulating and sealing it properly to um, reduce the number of um, the energy they use at home. And then um, we can also encourage recycling and composting. Um, we can think about like the food mouth as well to reduce carbon emission associated with the provision of um, goods. And then we can reduce like um, beef intake and dairy intake, like Mercy said, because um, um, beef especially uh, is one of the biggest contenders um, of carbon footprint. So reducing or like encouraging people to like be more vegan can help, but not like completely like en eliminating the use of beef because that, mm -hmm. that, that's not sustainable. People can't like, do that because this is their way of living. So maybe encouraging a like reduction of the consumption. And then um, we should try to like reduce water usage in, in our products. So maybe in our company or at home, so mm -hmm. this will lower the, um, the amount of energy required to pump trees and eat the water. And then conservation along the water uh, usage would um, will continue from there. That's, that's what I think. Definitely. Some great points. Thank you so much. And I completely agree. It, it's about companies trying to do genuine acts and not just stuff for marketing. I completely agree. Um, the next question I have is for Dr. Carmen. So do companies have an ethical responsibility to become more sustainable, even if it reduces their profit margins? Uh, thank you very much. Yes, uh, the answer is yes, but there are some caveats, of course. So mm -hmm. there has been an increased awareness of uh, social responsibility and sustainability, and uh, now it's uh, accepted uh, across uh, the board that businesses and uh, academics are think that sustainability should be at the heart of um, businesses' agenda. And as uh, Suliat said, uh, actually, uh, it helps if it's part of the strategy, a comp you know, competitive strategy of firms as well. And um, if, if in the short run, perhaps uh, some uh, sustainability uh, initiatives are expensive, they can still pay off in the in the long run uh, by improving the brand image, by attracting the right consumers, the right employees. And we've seen, as I said, that uh, survey says that um, some uh, employees now, young people think that they might even take a pay cut just to work for a sustainable firm. Um, a brand image improvement um, attracts better investment as well, investors. Um, but um, yes, I agree that uh, you shouldn't do it for the market, is a marketing gimmick. And again, a very recent survey within uh, the British, uh, with British consumers say that some of them are quite skeptical when uh, people, you know, companies are uh, drumming around about their sustainability issues. However, we see um, uh, um, a survey by uh, Credit Suisse and uh, in emerging economies shows that uh, emerging uh, uh, economies, uh, consumers are going through a shift towards more sustainable um, lifestyles, healthier. For example, um, they prof uh, this fear about health associated with a pandemic made them more interested in organic foods. So this is where some businesses can uh, tap into this market as well. So it can be, it, there can be a win-win situation. There's no wrong uh, done if the companies can benefit from being sustainable. And this is where my research shows as well. We cannot expect companies to solve all the problems of the world. There are too many. Uh, and companies have, uh, especially small and medium enterprises, have a, a lots of resource constraints. So my research shows that it's best to focus on those um, um, sustainability activities that enhance your competitive advantage and they align with the competitive strategies. So for in Britain, I found that uh, um, small and medium enterprises that focus on community related uh, sustainability issues can benefit in terms of uh, firm growth, um, especially the ones that are um, compete on a cost uh, leadership strategy because if you help your community, you raise awareness of various issues, you advertise your products as well, and you actually have a, um, a, a say in attracting a new um, workforce pool. I also find in my research that um, um, sustainability actions related to the workforce can also work in uh, helping um, stop the decline in sales uh, for companies, for small and medium companies that um, um, compete on uh, 
differentiation. If you look after your workforce, and this is very important now at the moment, um, looking after your workforce can actually help uh, improving the quality of your product. So there's another thing I really like. Uh, there was a saying, it says, you shouldn't leave a, um, a good crisis go to waste. And this is where the, the crisis ha can, can present an opportunity for companies to find sustainable innovation, to find solutions, and um, um, do well by doing good as well, but also helping the planet and the people and the, the profit as well. So, for example, a study on the um, industry, textile industry in Italy has shown that the CEOs are increasingly aware of the fact that now consumers in the uh, fashion industry really want not only eco-friendly products, but also uh, you want to trace the traceability of your products. You, you want to make sure the supply chain is very um, eco-friendly as well. And that takes a lot of time and money to change or to implement. But the idea is that um, this, this crisis uh, has given the impetus and it is an opportunity for companies to thrive. And as you're saying about shop therapy and all that, uh, uh, retail therapy, um, an interesting example I found from Ikea We've been stuck in our homes um, and probably we thought oh, we might want to, to, to get better, I don't know, better sofa or better bookshelf, um, but we don't have money perhaps because we we're worried about the jobs, uh, maybe somebody has been not furloughed because uh, the scheme doesn't cover them. So IKEA have found this way of integrating um, a circular consumption model into their strategy and uh, bringing a new facet to sustainability and they said, well, we have a shop where you can bring your pre-loved furniture and uh, we'll give you 50% of that, the value of initial value of that product on your card. And then you can bring, um, uh, you can buy a new product. So marrying uh, the lack of demand, but potential demand, if we really want it uh, to spruce up our living rooms with their business model as well. And IKEA in the past, they were, you know, they were trying to tell us to change your furniture as, as quickly as you change your socks. Uh, that was not very uh, sustainable, wasn't it? So in a way, it's a good way for them to change their business model and tackle this um, pandemic as well. And in a way that makes sense, um, for the business, but also helps the environment. And I hope that we will continue to think about the environment and the planet, sorry, the planet and the people uh, as we come out of this uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, and some of these changes will continue to stay with us. Apparently secondhand furniture sales are popular as well um, with uh, other players like um, John Ruiz, um, um, probably we've all been on Vinted as well. So they, they are, there's an innovation coming out there um, that can tackle uh, issues step by step. But we need everybody to take uh, part in this as well. As uh, Catherine very well said, we need a collective and you can't, you know, to change the, um, uh, to address clim climate change, you need uh, Greta Thunberg, but you also need uh, um, the Paris Agreement and we know the uh, American uh, um, administration is now back uh, at, uh, at the agreement. We need also governments like the British government who uh, decided to uh, stop um, the sales of uh, second, uh, sorry, of uh, petrol cars by 2030. But you also need companies to innovate. You need companies to find ways like Nissan or Tesla or um, Volkswagen and companies to have, have find a way to make these uh, products more affordable because we want to be more environmentally friendly, but we need to walk the walk if our purse allows us in a way. And so it's a bridging that gap between uh, what we would like to happen and what we can do. And hopefully um, um, together we can hopefully make a more uh, changes to us the sustainability in the future as well. Definitely. Thank you so much. And I completely agree. Uh, sustainability and profit margins are not mutually exclusive. There are, you can be sustainable and profitable at the same time. You know, um, thank you so much, Dr. Carmen. I'd okay. like to ask Catherine a question now. So what are some of the lessons learned from COVID and what can we do to address the sustainability concerns moving forward? Thank you. Yeah, so I think there's a lot of parallels that can be drawn between um, the COVID pandemic and the climate crisis. They're obviously both global challenges. They don't respect country boundaries or politics. Um, but at the same time, they do also highlight some of the inequalities within our society. And I'll touch back on that later. And um, they both impact people and their lives and their livelihoods. And both of them are caused by and to a certain extent driven by humankind pushing at boundaries, at sustainability boundaries. Um, but the pandemic has shown us that there is a way forward to that solution. We've seen the global community really coming together to tackle the challenge, which is really, really heartening. 
Um, we've adapted much more quickly, I think, than anyone could have expected. I remember back in um, sort of March 2020 when my office was all told to go home and there was this outrage, I will never be able to use video conferencing, I'm not going to be able to work from home effectively, but we have. There have been bumps along the way, as, as we've all seen, but people have adapted and we've learned that, that human beings are very adaptable, much more than we ever thought they could be when they need to be. Um, but the one thing I think that's that's been really impressive is the way that science and innovation have worked incredibly quickly and then government have enabled these rapid this rapid policy implementation to save millions of lives essentially through the development and rollout of a vaccine program globally and I think if we just think what could we do if we turn that towards tackling climate change what could we achieve um, so I think there's so many lessons that have been learned that we can really um, take forward with that but I think it's also highlighted some of the scale of some of the challenges. So um, I often hear people talking about how um, COVID has really helped the sustainability effort. People are traveling less, um, they're sort of staying at home, they're appreciating green space, all of these things. But if you look at the figures, um, they don't stack up. So during the year of COVID, most of the world's economy shut down completely. Global carbon emissions fell by about six or 7%. That was it. Um, and they've pretty much returned back to normal, despite the fact that a lot of the large swathes of the economies are still closed. Um, to achieve the kind of levels of carbon reduction we need globally to avoid runaway climate change, we need that six or seven percent reduction every single year. So we need a pandemic style change every single year to achieve what we need to achieve. So I think it's really um, shed light on the absolute scale of the challenge. Um, we used to see the challenge called, um, we see, see the word unprecedented. We need unprecedented change. Pre-COVID, I think unprecedented was just synonymous with impossible. We can't do anything, let's not even try. Now we know that unprecedented just means we haven't tackled it yet. And COVID has shown us that we can tackle these things. So I think it has shed a bit of light and there is hope on the horizon. And as I mentioned before, now is really the time to, to take action and capitalize on all the lessons that we've learned from COVID. Definitely. Some wonderful points. Thank you so much. Completely agree that you know, we humans are so adaptable and we have to just come together and tackle climate change together. Otherwise, nothing will happen. Thank you so much, panelists. I have one final question for everyone. Quick answers. So the final question is, has COVID helped or hindered the sustainability vision? Yes or no? Dr. Carmen? Mm, no. <laughs> Mercy? Um, I'll say yes. Lovely. Okay. Mm, I can say, I think it's a mix of both. So <laughs> it has helped and at the same time injured. Love. And Catherine? I'm an optimist, so I'm going to say it's helped. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Thank you so much, panelists, for joining us today and for bringing such amazing insight uh, to this discussion. We do really appreciate it oh, and your expertise is valued. So thank you so much and hope you all have a lovely day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye.